Vintage typography is pretty amazing, right? It's beautiful, it's stunning, it's timeless. And what's even better is today we have these amazing fonts that have been crafted after this old lettering or sign painting style. And you might have acquired some of those and wondering what's the best way to use my vintage typography. Now that I have it, we're gonna go into tips on how to do exactly that. And then we're gonna show you some live examples using Kittle of how we can easily achieve vintage effects. So let's get right into it, but do me a quick favor and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other tips and tricks videos that we upload here on the channel. So our first tip here is about composition. So we're looking at the composition, and so what you might commonly want to do as an example is we have this full rectangle shape around here. So we have this full rectangle shape that is surrounding all of the components, all of the type that is inside this composition, right? So we have the outer shape and then we have these inside elements that are filling that shape. So we have this beautiful rise element here in the middle, which is going to be the focal point of this layout, right? You see bot botanicals over there on the right here. And so then what we're going to do is fill in that shape with smaller elements. So we have a frame here, a nice frame for that rise effect. We have some florals. We have some subtext, things that fill up this full rectangle composition. So this is just one of the tips for you to use vintage typography that you might have commonly seen seen back in the old days. All right, so our second tip here is about using arches on a shape. In this particular shape, we have a rhombus here, but we are using arched text against a geometric shape. Could be a circle in this scenario, it is a rhombus. And so we have a smaller arc here as well, an arch here as well. So we have two arch texts, which is commonly how you might see vintage text lay out. And similar to our last point, we have that full shape on the outside. Again, in this particular scenario, it is a rhombus, could be anything else, but you see that it surrounds rounds the outer border, this outer shape, and then we're filling it with elements inside. So we're using those frames, we're using these little subtexts like EST and 2021, we're using this line illustration, things like that to fill the space. And our third tip here, we are using circular frames. This is another super common thing that you'll see framed around vintage type is this circle cut. And so we have this type set that's completely straight. You could curve it if you want, but it looks really nice, of course, to have it straight like this. And then we have text surrounding it in an arc and then the frame as you see is an arc so you can see the similarity of course between the left and the right side and we're filling that space again same as the last two points we're filling this circular frame with elements with supporting text in this more vintage typography style so this one's a little bit easier to achieve so you could start with this one and then move on to the other more advanced ones but this is a very common way to use vintage type all right moving on to our next tip you are going to commonly see this in vintage design which is using a decorative initial or a capital letter. So you can see two examples here. On the left, you can see how we've used an enlarged letter, that enlarged first capital letter, and then we've decorated it, right, to stand out amongst the rest. So you can see this letter C is a great deal bigger than the rest of the text. The B is bigger than the rest of the text. And you'll see this commonly throughout different vintage labels. On the right, you'll see that the R is really big and the last letter S is really big. You'll also commonly see that is this kind of symmetry, this kind of in capping, so to speak. And then we're still, we still have a good shape for each of these and we're still filling them in with different elements. But I want to show you how easy this is to do in Kittle. So I have the C as a separate text box and I've enlarged it so that it's bigger. And then you have AFE as a separate text box. So it's really easy to manage in Kittle. Then I could go over here to decorations and I could just completely change it. I could make it a little bit bigger. I could change the shading to something different. I could make it bezeled like this if I wanted to. I'll just put it back to how it was. And then I can even change a different decoration. I can change the color easily. And so this is one tactic, one tip in using using vintage typography well, right? So to decorate these initials, to decorate these capital letters. Same way over here on the right, you have the R, that's a separate text box. You have the middle, that's a separate text box. Pretty easy to move these up and down in your layout. All right, another thing that you'll commonly see in vintage typography are these stylistic alternates or something we might commonly refer to as glyphs. And so you can see there are differences here, like in this R, it's not straight, it's not utilitarian, and in this B as well, it's 
a little bit different and so we're using alternate characters to create interest and we're using them sparingly we're using them nicely in the layout you can see this b is a little bit bigger it's got this flourish around very similar to the way the r wraps around the d and it also frames the bottom of coffee and then over here we have this h that's a little bit different the crossbar here you can see the flourish around here and then we also have uh, the r right before the ampersand right it's kind of tail ending the last little bit and then we have a different s enlarged a little bit different s but we're keeping the end of that straight so we want to try to use these sparingly we don't want to go overboard we don't have crazy flourishes all over in this example the r here and the s is totally fine we don't need every letter every character to be an alternate or some something really crazy or fancy and just a quick word on glyphs and alternate characters we actually have a dedicated video on how to find and use them in Kittle. you can click this card right here and it'll take you to that video where you can check that out and by the way if you're getting value out of this vintage typography tips video let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and that red subscribe button and then let me know in the comments where is your favorite website to find vintage inspiration I absolutely love Pinterest I also love this other website called archive.org but I know there are so many out there and it would help me if you let me know so type down in the comments what's your favorite place to find vintage inspiration all right let's get back to the design tips Another super helpful tip is to study vintage print media, right? Packaging, labels. You can go on Pinterest, type that in, type in vintage label, type in something else like vintage packaging, and things like this are going to come up, and they're really helpful for you figuring out what font type to use, right? What kind of vintage typography to use, how to put them together, how to lay them out, how are the layouts working in this specific frame, what arches are being used, what compositions are being used, and the different decorations. Decoration. So what decorative styles of type are being used and what goes together well? This is a really easy way for you to get better at using vintage typography is to simply just study that. And I know it sounds simple, but it is so, so important in making your composition stand out. Another tip is to look up vintage type specimens. You can look this up on Pinterest or Google or wherever else, but this is going to give you a ton of inspiration for shading, decorations, how to style your vintage type, and you can can see here there are things like double shading there's hatching there's decorative kind of carnival lettering there's this bevel lettering a lot of these you can actually do easily in Kittle some of these would be a little bit more complicated a little bit more difficult to do but regardless this is going to give you a lot of inspiration for how to style your vintage type now we're going to actually provide some shading and decoration examples so we have this hatched here on this left this hatched shadow and we're going to add that to a decorated kind of color cut design for this letter A. So you see over here on the left, we have this dark red that we're going to start with. We have this beautiful font called Old Alfie in Kittle. So we're going to start working on this. And I want to show you how easy it is to do in Kittle. So if I add this color cut effect, I can play with the weight. I can make it super thin. I can make it super thick. I can make it lower. I can make it higher. Whatever I want, I can adjust that easily in Kittle. And then I'm going to add this simple border weight. I don't want to make it too intense. It really doesn't need to be too thick. And then we want to take this letter A and we're going to duplicate it. So we're going to hit Command C and Command V and that will give us a duplicate of that letter. You can also hit the Alter option and drag uh, feature to duplicate your text. And then what we want to do is send it backward because we want it to be behind that letter because now we're going to go over to the text decoration and we're going to add these, these oblique hash lines. And then we can change the weight if we want it to be really, really big, but we want it to be uh, we want it to be smaller. We want this kind of old wood etched uh, etched board scratch board style design and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the border way off we don't need that and then I'm going to set this color to the background color because I want just the etch lines to come through so you see that now just those individual lines are coming through like there's this hatching style that you would commonly see in vintage design and then what we can do is we can take this top letter we can give it even more interest we can go over to the effect panel again we can give it a shadow that is the same color as the background Now we could leave this like this it looks really cool but watch what happens when I click this shadow it makes it look like there's this faux shadow or this ghost shadow or this line spacing in between the hatching then I can just move this to where I want and now it's looking really cool it's looking really vintage here's another example of shading and decoration that we're gonna do we're gonna use this diagonal oblique hatching along with a deep shadow 
over here that you can see on the left. And so we're starting with this letter B here, and then I'll get started with my decoration. So go over to the effects panel, add those oblique lines, and then of course you can change them, but they're not gonna do anything if it's the same color. So we need to change it to that lighter color. Boom, it cuts through like that. And you can play with your colors in your background, obviously. And then you can change your weight. You can get exactly how you want it. Maybe you're looking at a reference that's a little bigger. Then we're gonna add this slight border, that darker blue border that comes across against the background a little bit better, that little darker blue. Then we'll duplicate it very much similar to the previous example. Then we're going to send it backward because this is going to be our shadow. So then we can go back over to the effects panel and we don't need the, the hatching anymore, but we do want this block shadow. So if I increase the offset, I need to change the color to that darker blue and then boom, it's actually quite big. We don't exactly want it that big. So we'll move this offset down like about right here. And so then what we need to do is we'll go to the top text and we'll add another shadow effect that's in that lighter blue so that it looks like it's completely cut through. And there you have, it. it's pretty easy. Of course, you can change your offset. Maybe you can make it thinner, thicker. I think just about equal, maybe a little more than halfway is looking pretty good like this. So for our last example, we're going to extend some shading here. So we're gonna combine shading and decoration. Again, very similar tips to the last two examples, but a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more fancy. So we have this bevel shadow. And the way we do that is we'll click our text that we've got as this uh, sh dark shade of orange. Then we'll go over to this 3D shadow that's in bezel. It looks like there's this uh, shadow effect that you might see in carnival lettering. Then we can uh, adjust the shadow here. I think four is about right. And then we want to add our oblique lines again, our diagonal lines again. And I think just having it as a slight shade above is fine. We don't want to go too crazy with it because we're going to have th this shadow plus another shadow. So maybe just a slight shade lighter to stand out get that detail. And again, that inner shadow is already looking quite nice. And so what we want to do is similar to before, we'll duplicate it and then we'll right click and we'll send to the back and then we'll go over and change our shadow that will extend that shadow and then we're going to change the color so it looks a little weird right now that's okay we just need to go over here and change it to that darker orange to get this effect and so that's looking pretty good of course you can change your offset you can make it bigger you can make it smaller i think about equal a little too big like this is a little weird about equal is good and maybe shorter like this is also pretty good again check out your references see what you can do but you can do this super easily in kittle now i wanted to quickly show you that we also have vintage text layouts already ready to go in Kittle. So if I click on text right here and then I open up this vintage tab, we, we even have a vintage tab here, I can scroll through all of these different layouts and you can see some of them there over on the right. You can click them and easily edit them. Now we also have these decorated presets as well. So if I click show all there, we have some already uh, decorated text, some layouts, we have different colors, we have different font choices that go well with different colors, and of course you can edit those as well. Now we also have several other videos on vintage typography and for all of you font lovers, and I have this playlist you can click right here on this card to see. You can see some of the previews here on the board. I am looking forward to your comments and your notes on this video. That's all for this video. Like I said, I would love it if you check out the other videos here on the channel. They're really going to help you. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for Kittle yet, you can do so for free if you use the link down in the description. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next video, create magic.